Good morning. Uh, my name is Antonio Breyer. I'm a consumer specialist uh, with the county. I've been a consumer specialist for about 18 months. Uh, and prior to me being a consumer specialist with the county, I have a background in law enforcement similar to Susan. I was formerly a probation and parole officer, and I was also the criminal reassignment specialist for Prince William County's public schools. However, but today I want to talk to you about uh, your experience around purchasing a car and taking your car to any of our local body shops in the county. Just some things you want to look out for and some things you want to have in your mind when you go through those experiences. So this is an overview. We'll be talking about your budget. Uh, you want to think about warranties and service contracts. We're going to talk about the limit law as it pertains to Virginia. Um, and we'll also talk about your consumer rights when you visit one of our local body shops. So uh, first, I want to talk to you about your budget, right? So is you have several options on how you're going to purchase your car. Uh, you can have you can have cash. You can pay with it if uh, with a loan from your credit union or uh, your bank, or you can secure financing through the dealership. When you secure financing through a dealership, they may offer you some incentives, like uh, to reduce the purchase price on the vehicle or low to no interest on that on that loan. OK, on this slide, I want to talk to you about uh, the vehicle price monthly formula. So most times when people go into the car buying uh, transaction, they only think about purchasing the car based on the monthly budget which is good, but you want to have a better understanding of how much money you're actually spending when you take a loan out. So in this example, you have a purchase price of $25,000. You have an interest rate of about 8%, and the, the, the length of the finance loan, or excuse me, the term of the loan, 60 months. So when you take all that into account, you're ultimately spending approximately $34,000. Now, if you're any good at math, you will see that you're spending just $9,000 to take a loan out to buy that $25,000 car. Just something to consider when you choose the financing option when you purchase a car. And on this slide, I want to talk to you about some resources that you uh, want to look at when you want to learn more about the car you want to get. So firstly, you can get your vehicle's history uh, by visiting the National Motor Vehicle tighter information system at this website. And you also want to get some information about the car's uh, accident history and the repair history. So whenever a vehicle is in a car accident or they take the car in for a body shop, they enter that information into one of these registries. Um, they also include information like how many owners the car had before, um, and just a bunch of information you would want to know if you're purchasing a used vehicle. Uh, you can go to AutoCheck, Carfax.com, or even VinAudit.com. And then uh, lastly, you want to check to see if the vehicle has been recalled. You can do this by simply going to the National Highway Traffic Safety and Administration website. All right, so this is the fun part. So we, once you find your car, you the car that you want you want to do a couple of things you want to test drive that car so when i talk about test drive i'm talking about you want to get a car that fits you and fits the thing that you're trying to do with that car so take me for example if i'm purchasing a car to uh, primarily use it for work commutes and my commute is about an hour each way i'm naturally not going to be looking for a car like a prius i want something where i'm gonna have a bunch of leg room and you also want to take that vehicle on um, different terrains. You want to see how that car responds in different conditions. You want to take that car in residential areas, drive 25, maybe 35 miles per hour. And you also want to take that car on the interstate. You want to push that limit up to maybe 55, 65 uh, miles per hour just to see how it handles different conditions. Um, and you also, if you're buying a used vehicle, you want to check out that buyer's guide. 
So the buyer's guide, I'll show you a sample buyer's guide on the next slide. So it, it will include information like if the car is being sold as is in that condition, um, what percentage of the repair, excuse me, what percentage of the repair costs a dealer would pay if it comes with a warranty. And you also want to just keep, a, uh, keep the buyer's guide as a reference uh, going forward. So in, if you look at this picture, we have samples, uh, sample buyer's guides. Uh, the one um, that you can barely see is actually was, uh, one we found in a car um, on a used, dealer shop, uh, used dealership lot. Um, and on this one, it has the warranty box check. Um, if we were able to read it, it, it would tell us exactly what's covered under that warranty, how long the warranty is, if there was a warranty purchased by the previous owner, and if that warranty actually travels with the vehicle um, when it's purchased by another owner. If the, if the as-is box is checked, um, the car is, has no warranty, you're buying it as-is, and you can't go back to the dealer telling them that you found a problem with the car if you drove it off the lot. All right, so we have a bunch of warranty options, so we'll go through each of them. So the first one is the bumper to bumper. This is the most comprehensive type of protection you can get. It covers most of the systems in a vehicle and the parts. The second warranty I have here is the powertrain warranty. It covers most of the parts of the car that make it move, including the engine and the transmission and the front and rear wheel driving systems. And lastly, the rust and corrosion warranty covers minimally uh, the replacement of body parts, uh, excuse me, the rusted through body sheet metal. And we'll talk about service contracts on this slide. So service contracts are a little bit different than a warranty. A warranty is extended by the manufacturer. Um, a service contract, however, is an agreement that you um, that you get with a, a third party, and it'll tell you exactly how, uh, what type of coverage it has, what parts it'll cover, and how long it lasts. So when you're determining if you need a service contract or not, you want to think about how long you're going to have the car, and if that particular car has um, issues a lot of people have with that, with, with that, that car previously. All right, we'll talk about what does as is mean. Um, like I said before, if you purchase the car as is, you do not have an opportunity to go back to the dealer, um, getting any work done for things you find. So we get a lot of calls about this in particular. A lot of people buy cars from used dealerships or they may buy a car from a private dealer, a private seller, and they just don't even understand they're purchasing the car without a warranty. Um, and they want us to help them get some money back or some type of resolution when, honestly, in actuality, it's, it's very difficult to get to a resolution with someone knowing that they, they sold you the car as is. They are not obligated to help the problem that you discovered after you drove that car off the lot. All right, on this slide, I want to talk to you about the Lemon Law. So uh, there's a lot of misconception about the lemon law. A lot of people think a lemon is simply any car you purchase and you for some reason have problems with it and you can't get it fixed. But that's not the case. So in the state of Virginia, there are a bunch of criteria that your vehicle has to meet before uh, the manufacturer will consider purchasing a car back. Some of those conditions you have to meet, it, it, the car must be a newly purchased vehicle or leased in the state of Virginia, and it must be covered by a warranty. Um, the car must be used for personal uses. It can't be a work vehicle. It can't be a vehicle you use for your side jobs you work on the weekend. Um, and the vehicle has to have a, a defect that you and the dealership or the manufacturer has been trying to fix um, either three times, um, and you, there's there's no resolve with the, uh, the issue with that with that vehicle, and the vehicle has to be um, in the shop for not a consecutive 30 days, but just a total of 30 days in the body shop, and it can't be fixed. And it has to be something that deals with the safety of the vehicle, 
um, or uh, even if the defect or condition doesn't affect the, uh, the vehicle's drivability. Well, that didn't make sense. What I was trying to say was that the vehicle, the problem with the vehicle has to be uh, something to deal with how the car drives. All right, uh, when buying a new car in Virginia, um, so there's no automatic right to rescind a vehicle contract unless it's specifically written in the contract. So that simply means you can't return a vehicle just because you didn't like it um, in a particular amount of days. It has to be in writing in that contract with the dealership. However, there is one exception. So if you get your financing through the dealer and for some reason it falls through, uh, you have the right to have that dealer um, buy back the car and get some of your money back. All right, on this slide, I want to talk to you about negotiating financing. Uh, when you want to negotiate the, the, the price of the car you're, you're buying, um, especially if you're buying a used vehicle, you want to know how much that vehicle is worth on the market. Um, you can check websites like Edmunds and Kelly Blue Book. They'll let you know uh, what other people in the market consider how much consider the value of that vehicle. So, for instance, if you have um, a Honda Accord you're looking at and it's a, you want to look at what's the value of that particular vehicle on the market. So if it's a 2000 Accord, a 2020 Accord um, with 40,000 miles on it, you want to see what other people are willing to pay for that same exact vehicle. Um, and once you have that information, you have a, a bunch of room to negotiate. Um, with the with the seller or the dealer about the price of that used vehicle. All right. Lastly, I want to talk to you about some of your rights when you are taking your car to the body shop. So a lot of people don't know uh, when you take your car to the body shop in the county, you should see this sign. Um, a long time ago, some of, some of the people in Consumer Affairs, they went around and, and posted this sign on a bunch of body shops so that you can know what your rights are um, when you enter. A lot of people don't know all the things that you have rights to. So uh, we'll, go, run, we'll run through them really quickly. So the first one, it talks about your right to ask for a written estimate. The, the body shop does not have to give you a written estimate unless you ask for it. And They'll let you know if the estimate costs um, any money to get that. And the estimate should be broken down into parts and labor. Um, and then you can determine if you want to go with that particular body shop or not. You can go to another body shop and see what, what their price, what their asking price is for that particular job. Um, and uh, on the second one, we talk, it talks about um, charging for an estimate or a diagnosis. So it, they should tell you how much it costs when you're asking for that for that particular item. Um, we talked about before how the estimate needs to include the labor and parts broken down. Um, and it also should tell you how long you should expect for your car to uh, to be in the shop so you can pick it up. Number four talks about how you may not be charged more than 10% uh, above what that written estimate says. So, for instance, if I'm going to take my car to get my brakes repaired, it may cost two dollars or $3,000. And uh, that written estimate should let you know what the parts and the labor uh, is. And when you ultimately pick your car up, uh, you can't be charged more than 10% of what they put on that written estimate. Um, if they do, you can call us and let us know, and we can start uh, the complaint process. Um, I know Susan talked to you a little bit about the complaint process earlier, um, but we can run through it a little bit if you want. So say, for instance, you take your car to, to a repair shop and they give you an estimate for $3,000. And when you pick the car up, they tell you, hey, it was um, additionally we found out when we were fixing the brakes that you had um, to get your transmission fixed. So we went ahead and did it. 
That's the first mistake. They cannot do that. So that's when you know to call us and to get advice about what to do next. Now, if you if you called me in that instance and you told me your situation, I would tell you, hey, just uh, let the dealership know that they were not supposed to do that, that they needed to call you first and get authorization before they went ahead and did that. Because you're expecting to pay just $3,000. You don't want to get there and have to say, hey, where I'm going to find $2,000 to get my car back. Um, so in that instance, uh, we would bring that to their attention in, in your formal complaint and kindly let them know that if they do not uh, comply with the state laws, this is not just for the county, this is for the entire state, that they need to uh, essentially follow the law. And hopefully we can get to a place to where you get a refund check um, so you don't miss out on that money. And five, so five is important. A lot of people don't know this. So if you take your car to a, a body shop that you may not really be familiar with or you may not be really sure if they told you that the work that you needed to get done was exactly what they said. Uh, so let's give an example. You are getting your, um, your tires replaced. They told you, you brought your car to the shop and they told you, hey, you, you brought your car in to get just a, a state vehicle inspection. However, we discovered that your car needs um, tires. Um, you could ask for those tires back once you um, authorize them to put new tires on and you could take those tires to a, a mechanic that you actually do trust and just to make sure that you're not getting uh, scammed or taken advantage of just because you do not know your customer rights when it comes to getting parts uh, replaced. Now there's a caveat to that so if the parts are in a warranty for trade-in parts you will not be able to take that particular part back. You have to give it back to the, to the body shop and send it back to the manufacturer so they can go through their process with that particular warranty. But if you do not take all that information away today, you can always give us a call Monday through Friday, um, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and you can talk to me, you can talk to one of the other consumer specialists you saw earlier uh, through the presentations and we can help guide you through the buying process um, so it's not taken advantage of and also through the repair process um, so that you're a, 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 an, an informed consumer um, and that's the end of this presentation um, once again